Welcome to Trek Table, your live stream ritual. Holding Trek space for Black, Indigenous, Brown, Women of Color, Queer or Otherwise, and our allies. Hey, I'm your host, Dela, and today I'm holding Trek space for some amazing sci-fi centered on badass women of color. Come on. And I am your co-host, Claudia, and today I am holding Trek space for faith in the power of communication. Hi, I'm your co-host, Maya Mama, and I'm holding Trek space for taking the time you need to find a solution. And hi, I'm your guest, Leticia, and I'm holding Trek space for trying when trying feels impossible. Welcome to the Trek Table. We start with acknowledging that our teams for Trek Table are on the unceded lands of the Tongva, Chumash, Quiche, Ohlone, Puyallup, Pawtucket, and Massachusetts peoples. We are grateful to the indigenous stewards of these lands, the ancestors who have come before, those that are here now, and those who have yet to come. I invite our listeners and viewers to be on in acknowledgement of the lands that you are on. Let's take a deep breath in and out. Thank you all so much for joining us today as we hold Trek space for women of color here in front of our uh, digital audience on the Trek Table YouTube channel. What's up, what's up? We're so excited that you all are here. And thank you to those of you who have found us and are listening on the podcast. Hey, hey, everybody. Our opening track for this episode is titled Chicana Skies by the band Quetzal off their album Quetzal. You'll be hearing several tracks by Quetzal throughout this episode of Trek Table. Follow them at Quetzal Music on Instagram and see our show notes or the chat for a link to their merchandise and more. Mm -hmm. We want to welcome everybody to episode 45 of the Trek Table. We cannot believe it. So exciting. Thanks for showing up for this conversation with women of color as we talk about Star Trek Discovery. So much business. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus and the show went and finished itself. So we are here to talk about episode 12. We are so excited to welcome back our guest, uh, Letitia Jones. Welcome back. Thank you so much for, for joining us again on the Trek Table. And of course, we want to say thanks to everybody who is listening and viewing out there. Uh, we are so happy to have you. We're going to jump into this episode written by Kyle Gerald, directed by Olatunde Onsonsami, um, who's one of our favorite directors on this show. Uh, I just want to say, like, we're going to get a lot of things in this episode of Trek Table. We're going to break down this episode, season four, episode 12, Species 10C. We want to talk a little bit about these emo hydrocarbon mists, this first contact orb, and the math. Plus, you know, Auntie Reno still be a prisoner up in bookship, so we have to talk about Tarka's obsession and all the different things, and the Universal Translator is not helpful. So this is the kind of episode I think Trek Table really is, <laughs> is, is built for, honestly. Um, super excited. So if you are watching Discovery and you want a no-spoiler journey, I'm just going to say Spoiler Zone is in full effect for Season 4 all the way through Episode 11, and we're going to talk all the way through 12. So if you haven't seen it yet, Take care of that journey. Go watch it. Come back and find us after. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're a listener and a fan and appreciate that Trek Table brings you different perspectives and points of view, then we invite you to continue to support this space by visiting the Trek Table Patreon. We're so glad that you're joining this BIWOC Trek conversation. Hello and welcome. So that we can build with each other, how do you enter this conversation as a Star Trek fan? Are you Star Trek curious? A newbie? Are you an OG Trekkie? Come from a Star Trekking family? Star Trek fam? Trek zaddy? Trek baby? Let us know in the chat. We are back with Trek Table episode number 45, jumping deeply into the Star Trek Discovery season four, episode 12, Species 10. We are going to jump into this episode a couple of different ways. Trek Table questions, we've got disco recap, we've got some disco design, thematics is going to braid it all together. We're going to come back and highlight some of our favorite Star Trek shenanigans. We've got some great signal boosts, final thoughts, and of course, the Trek Table always ends in gratitude. 
So before we get all the way through that, we got to do this last little bit of business so that we know who's at this table. What are we talking about? What are we saying? So I want to invite um, Maya Mama. Can I ask you to help us model? How do we check in here at the Trek table? Uh, can I ask you to share your name, your pronouns, your visual description, any access check-in? And also, um, how do you enter as a Star Trek fan? Ooh, great. Well, I am Maya Mama. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a youngish looking, middle-aged black woman. Uh, I'm wearing my uh, my Cerritos shirt. And uh, I have sort of an orange red look for like the 10 C um, sort of homage and like a glossy lip. I have insignia on my headband, lots of red hair. I'm sitting on the bridge of the discovery uh, and uh, I'm a generational, I'm from a generational Trek family and I identify as Omni sci-fi. Okay. Okay. Welcome Maya Mama. Thank you so much for being here. And now I'm going to turn to Claudia. Claudia, can I invite you to check in and say what's up to folks? Hey, hello everyone. Uh, Claudia pronouns, they, theirs, uh, visual description, uh, African American. Um, I am, I've got a brown Afro. I'm wearing a Starfleet Academy t-shirt and I am sitting on the bridge of the original Star Trek. And, uh, I think I'm in the spot where, um, um, generally where Spock usually is. And, uh, my access check-in is that I'm actually in the midst of a gigantic flare today. So you might see me pull a face. I'm like, ah! that's me pulling a face. Cause one of my muscles is pulling me, not because I have a, a, a Star Trek opinion that I disagree with you about. Um, so other than that, all of my uh, access needs are met. I've got my Janeway coffee right here. And I identify as a generational Star Trek poly sci-fi fantasy lover. Get it. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for that. Yes, yes. Um, I'll go next in this ritual of checking in. Thank you, Claudia. Welcome. Um, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dela. Uh, my pronouns are she, he, they, or Dela. My visual uh, check-in is that I'm a mixed Filipinx person. I cut all my hair, so I used to have longer blue hair. Now I have shorter aquamarine gradations of blue hair. That's what I'm trying to have go on. Um, and uh, my access check-in is just that... Um, it's a little warm where I am, so I'm just trying to stay a little cool um, as we do all this. And I'll just say I enter as a Star Trek fan, uh, Next Generation originally, but once I met Star Trek Discovery, I have never looked back. It is my favorite show. It's a reason for Trek Table, and um, I am Polly in my love of sci-fi, but right now I'm super, super primary with disco, so... That's me. That's me. Um, and our final uh, voice today on the show, I want to welcome back our guest, Letitia Jones. Thank you so much for being here. Can I invite you? Go ahead. You know how to do this. You've been here a couple of times. Could you <laughs> go ahead and check in a little? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so delighted to be back. Um, so my name is Letitia. I use she, her pronouns. I identify as a Star Trek fan slash poly sci-fi nerd. Um, disco is where I'm primarily getting my sci-fi fix these days, but I'm also digging Picard. Uh, really excited for Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, Finishing Prodigy. It's just like fantastic. Uh, visually, uh, I am also a young, young-ish looking 30 some 30 something year old black woman with my multicolored scarf over my head and a lovely dark blue t-shirt. Um, and my, my access needs are met. I've got my tea, I've got my water. So I am good to go on this, uh, pen ultimate discovery adventure to the last one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Well, welcome as well, Letitia. And thanks everybody for showing up today uh, with us as we talk about this Star Trek episode. Super excited. All right, this last little bit of business. You know who we are. We just want to do a round of agreements. We welcome all who enter, whether you're a newbie or you were raised in a Star Trekking family. Welcome. Let's build this space together. Whether you use Trek Table as your nerdy exploration or as part of your self care ritual, Trek Table is a weekly space to put down the world for a second and come into Trek space. This is a space for Black, Brown, Indigenous femmes of color to be a fan, a geek, a nerd, and to explore the vastness of the Star Trek multiverse. Trek Table is also a place for allies to come and engage and explore as well. This is an opportunity for allies to hold space and focus on the insights, perspectives, and experiences that you or we may not be familiar with. 
And now that we're all here, we remind you that we seek to build an environment of mutual respect and listening. We understand that we're going to disagree, and that's actually part of the fun, but there's enough conflict going out, going on out there in the world. So let's keep our phasers on stun. Let's breathe in those agreement and let's go ahead and take a breath in. And exhale. And that brings us to our Trek Table questions posed to our Trek Table, assembled here, and to all of us participating in the Trek Table YouTube channel chat. Here's the question. Building relationship via gift is so smart. What would you give to start the best relationship? Welcome back to Trek Table question number one. Building relationship via gift is so smart. This is how they're going to build peace with the 10C, by giving them something that they know that the 10C will like and want. What would you give to start the best relationship? And let's say you can give that gift to either a space alien or to a person here on planet Earth. How are you going to start relationship with gift giving? Let's start with you, Maya Mama. I like to make food for people uh it can be difficult um because people have a lot of different you know allergies and food restrictions and things like that but it, when you get it right i think it's a great way to develop a friendship because food is delicious for the most part and it's awesome and um most people eat like i don't know if the yeah. tennessee eat I don't know if the 10 CE, but even giving them the boromite in a way is like giving them something that they need to nurture or to take care of themselves. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I would I'm going to say uh, lasagna's boromite to me. Hey, hey, yes. <laughs> uh, Leticia, what would you give to someone to start a relationship? What's a good gift? So I think uh, in discovery them giving the the born night since clearly that was after that was like really really smart uh but me personally i would like to take a page out of the uh saru tarina book of courtship and give some tea or a plant if it if it you know if that works with that person i'm just saying that i like that <laughs> Well, well, that would get me. Like, you would have me if you gave me either of those gifts. I recognize 10C. Maybe they're not into tea. We don't know yet. What is tea mm -hmm. for them? <laughs> well, Dela, Dela, what's a gift that you would give to start relationship? You know, I'm realizing as you asked this question that so much of my gift giving is contextual. Like, how do I figure out the context in which to give a gift? So I guess that's what the borite is for, uh, for them or us. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel also like part of me is like, well, if I'm going to a new place, I would want to give them something uh, simple, but something special. So like maybe, uh, you know, a really nice bag of, of, you know, a certain kind of rice or um, I, it would be in the food tip. I think it would also also maybe some kind of sage or some kind of cleansing, like some kind of plant that means goodness and open relationship. So but I realized how much meaning is embedded in like all of that. And like, just this episode really got me thinking a lot about, yeah, when we first are engaging with different cultural interaction, what, it, how do you establish when there is no commonality? Yeah. Like we have relationships. So you, you gave your suggestion, all three of us, we made like a face of, Oh, that would be so nice. But that's because we're the kind of people who like the same kind of things. Um, I feel like you can give a gift that is a, sometimes someone will give me a gift or I will give someone a gift and really I'm giving them something I like. They might mm -hmm. not like it. I gave them something mm -hmm. I thought had value and was wonderful mm -hmm. in the world. And maybe that's mm -hmm. not what they're into. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's always amazing when someone can give you a gift and, and it indicates that they were, thinking about you and wanting mm -hmm. to invest in you. All right. Mm -hmm. So we keep, we keep learning from discovery. Did you, oh, did yeah? you know that lumpia, um, <laughs> that everybody likes that and it's the perfect gift to give to anybody. Ever? I, I'm so glad to hear that lumpia is um, a gift. I mean, I will say often my experience with lumpia is it limits non meat eaters, but yes. I really want to specialize and just to be supportive. Like if you don't know lumpia, it's like Filipino egg rolls. 
And even the way we describe Lupi as like it's a Filipino egg roll, so it's context of the context. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, um, yeah, I wonder if there is space lumpia in the future. Mm. And- I don't see why there wouldn't be. There, <laughs> look, and and I know this is a sad uh, discovery reference, but if Zora can make tacos in the future, then empanadas that's true, that's true. Yeah. Like, pasal, yeah she makes pasal a pasal is that a uh, colbert's uh, soup yeah yes <laughs> yes made of mm-hmm. beyond beef in the chat <laughs> well i think we all know we all know what we would like to have like for our audience you all know what you could give to us as a gift apparently food is our love language and you could send us all kinds of snacks um, um again i just want to say i love learning from discovery and going oh this is modeling this is modeling ways to build relationship building relationship through gift giving i love it and that is trick table question number one Trick Table is brought to you in part by Outside In Theater. Outside In is an evolving force in equitable and transformative storytelling. For more information about Outside In Theater, check out their website at outsideintheater.org. And with that song, Matanzas by the band Quetzal, we know that it is time for Disco Recap. The game is simple. We collectively have 2.5 minutes to tell chunklets of the plot along the major storylines of this week's show. Trek table, get ready. We're going to retell the major storylines for Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 12, Species 10C, written by Kyle Jero and directed by Olatunde Osinsanmi. All right, Brandon, can we have 2.5 minutes on that clock, on that timer? All right, let's go. Incoming transmission. So we start out, um, I'm going to talk about Ndoye and Travis and Book and and their whole communication. So like um, Ndoye does not trust anybody ever. Um, I don't know why she is even there because she doesn't think anybody is going to succeed. She has no faith whatsoever. And like, as soon as there even seems to be like a slight hiccup, she's like, um, nope, it's not going to work. Oh my gosh. I need to call them right away. And she starts a chain reaction of just badness. Uh, so uh, Tarka and Book are still uh, in Book's ship trapped with Reno. It's not the other way around, in my opinion. But anyway, <laughs> he's on poking holes in what Tarka's doing. And then lets Book know, there are holes to be poked. You need to focus because you need to get your boy. And basically, that is the entire episode. Book finally is trying to get his boy in order and not working. So Zora is feeling real odd. She's not feeling right. She's just like, I've learned to trust my feelings, yo. So she like goes, she interrupts Adira and Stamets as they're like getting the dots all ready to do communication. They're just like, yo, 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 we got you. We'll get you, you talk to Culver. Culver's like, you need to listen to your feelings. So she, like, she gets in, she listens to her feelings. She, and that's how they realize, oh, something's wrong. Something is really wrong. Whoa. Okay. So then there's this whole storyline where we're actually meeting the 10 C and we're starting to understand what does first contact look like? We got all that info from the, the deserted nursery planet. And now we're trying to figure out how do we communicate? What are this emo hydrocarbon means? Oh, look, they're sending lights now. So we're getting a lot of new action. We're learning that math is the key, uh, the key bridge here. And I'll just say for the math heads, four plus five equals nine became a magical formula for that. Um, And we were able to get to a point where they were starting to be able to at least communicate basic things. But then we, and and trying to figure out how 10C thinks about uh, this uh, amalgamation of beings uh, assembled from the Federation. And so atomic numbers uh, become important, uh, carbon, the mix of the air. And uh, basically, Book and Tarka blow through and Reno sends a message that things are not going to go the way that we think it is. And Tennessee has cut off communication because Book and Tarka have messed all the things up. I feel like we missed a lot of really major plot points, y'all. Do we want to re-record? No, 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 not at all. Um, I'm just going to recommend that the audience 
go 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 find a recap elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me ask this. Claudia, you identified a couple things we missed. I love it. Like, I was just like, there's so many things in this episode. Like, there were so many things that happened. Yeah, they went into the orb, um, the four plus five, the, like, you know. Oh, and, and Cobra feeling very bad about his emotions. And mm-hmm. then, like, Stamets being like, all right, like, uh, we'll, we'll go on a date afterwards. Like, we're, we'll, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Uh, that said, um, I feel like we'll get into it in the episode. Right. And I'll <laughs> say if you're looking for resources to find out what's happening in Star Trek and looking at places where folks are depositing what's happening in specific episodes, Memory Alpha is always a great resource. So I just want to 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 go ahead and big up that well. And just say, you know, it doesn't happen every week, but maybe we'll be ready for that finale next week because that was Disco Recap. Welcome, welcome to Discovery Design. We've seen some beautiful and amazing design elements in this episode of Discovery, so let's dish. Letitia, I want to start with you. So we see um, a shot of Stamets and Adira, and um, then there's that clumsy crewman who like trips over and is all like, oh, I'm sorry. But like, what a way to get a credit, right? What a way to get a speaking credit. Um, uh, but uh, loading up the dots with the hydrocarbons and the and the boromite gift. Um, would you like to share any thoughts on what you thought of this element? Yeah, you know, to me, it felt like um, a callback to original track, um, just like uh, getting messages like up like little Zoom tube. And it was just like this. So like there's a there's like a, a factory assembly line element to it. But it, it was very it felt kind of old school in a way. Um, and I, I really appreciated that and that this you know, while, you know, we all have issues with like how people are mechanized these days, there is something to be said about the efficiency of it and just being like, okay, they're doing the business, they're doing the business, they're doing the business. Um, so yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting. Also, those dots are so cute. They're They're adorable. And like, I can't hate them. How can you hate them? (laughs) They, 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 they're giving me, um, uh, uh, DRD vibes, uh, like, like, again, I always bring up Farscape because I can't help myself, but mm. it's like, oh, look, adorable machines, which are helping me, and they're awesome, and I love their personality, and I feel sad whenever one of them is hurt. Okay. Can, can name one 1860 or something, or 1860. <laughs> 1812. 1816, 1812, that's it, 1812. All right, Claudia, let's move on to you. I want to I want you to talk about the Tensi, really. So, like, we see them sort of for the first time in this episode. Um, but not just them, but, like, um, their technology close-up uh, for the first time. Um, the the reds and the yellow, or the reds and the, the oranges, that fiery look that really pops against the, the darker black and whites. So um, I'm in full agreement with Letitia that this episode was giving me some of like the enjoyment points that I got from old school Star Trek and not just like the, the, the episodes, but the movies, like there was something about the mystery of the aliens really being like this mystery. I feel like with all of the other Star Treks, I'm so familiar with the universe that the story beats come to me and I'm expecting them. I'm like, yeah, how am I going to get my Klingon fight, my Romulan fight? But like this was what is this great mystery? I fully expected a dragon to come out of that cloud, right? And like the way that their technology works, where it's like a combination of like it's like a it's like a puzzle that you have to that you have to solve, and you have to have not just the facts, you also have the emotions and put them together. It's all cool with lights. I just thought it was very very cool looking, but also very mysterious and different. I liked that it. it was so different. Yeah, for real. Um... Well, we're finally out of the galaxy, so we get to see what other new places look like, which is always fun. That's always fun. Um, Dela, let's move to you. Um, would you like to share your thoughts on on books, um, Brig or that little I don't know prison space? Like it's so cluttered and it's just covered in things. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely it's covered. I think uh, on screen, if you're watching, we're seeing some of the clutter as Book stands next to Reno. Um, it definitely looks like the place they're storing whatever supplies they've stolen or whatever they got off of, off of Haas's planet. But then um, what I realized in watching it is like, that's the same place that's their bedroom, right? Like that's the programmable matter goes away. They, it also becomes a table where they sit at. So I think design wise, what they're what this century of Star Trek is showing us is physical space can be transformed using programmable matter whenever we need. And I just saw how it became the place for the clutter. It became the brig because then they could watch Reno too while they're on the ship. Or I also don't know that there's very much other space on book ship besides what we already see. That's true. Yeah, it's not actually that large. Yeah. Um, it does have the ability to like mold and change shape, but it's 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 a shuttlecraft. It fits inside of Discovery it's actually totally. quite easily. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I do often forget that that it's like it's actually kind of teeny. Um, it's like <laughs> yeah. a it's like a it's like a camper van. Mm -hmm. Um. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Like a space airstream. Yeah, and I'm not making any I'm not making any judgments about Burnham's boyfriend living in a camper van. Like he's doing his thing. I mean, it's not great right now, but <laughs> I mean, I feel like a I feel like a 16 wheeler would be a little bit more accurate just cuz you know, he's mm. a courier. He yeah, he's that's hauling true. things from place to place. And mm. so when you're hauling things place to place, you need space for the stuff and then mm -hmm. you're there. Mm -hmm. got a little cab so, to sleep in you know not that big so burnham's boyfriend is a trucker <laughs> kind of i like it but he's a, right. well, isn't he a vigilante <laughs> save the endangered species trucker oh yeah he's like um, love that he's I he's a trucker he's a trucker and a good guy that sounds like a show from the 80s um <laughs> it really does. like a hulk Hulk kind of thing, like where he travels on the road and is mm -hmm. solving environmental crises one town mm -hmm. at a time. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. A team <laughs> meets Highway to Heaven song. meets Murder, she wrote. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the Hulk meets Captain Planet, but I love it. I like, uh, I like it all. Uh, well, audience, what disco design elements would you like to see? Uh, or did you see that, that really resonated with you this episode? Let us know in the chat. And that was Discovery Design. That brings us to our truck table question number two. Um, what Would you make the same choices as, as General Ndoye, given the same information? <laughs> Welcome back with Trek Nable question number two, General Ndoye. General Ndoye has been protecting planet Earth for a minute. Like General Ndoye is like, has got that goal in mind and General Ndoye is fully betraying everyone on Discovery and making plans on her own. Secret style with Tarka and Book. What is up? I, I'm not sure. Is that right? Is it good? Is it wrong? I don't know. Y'all, would you do what General Ndoye did given the same information? Like, here's the thing. Us, we can, we can have all our judgments because we know we're genre savvy. We're outside. But if you were inside that universe, would you, would you be making the same choices? Because I got a lot of judgment. I need some help processing general enjoying. Can I, can I start with you again, Maya Mama? Do you mind if I start with you again? I would just, oh, I'd no. love to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, no, I would not do the, the, make the same choices and that's only because like the crew of discovery solved the burn and figured out how to spread dilithium all over the galaxy and has rebuilt the federation literally in a matter of months or like it hasn't even been that long so i i just would be like oh this is really scary but like like they're really good like they know what they're doing. They these are the professionals. Um, and I also I deal with my anxiety different. I like to talk it out. So if I was scared, I'd be I would be like, I'm super scared right now. 
about what is happening. Please, somebody help help me with this. But who would General Lindoya even talk to? I mean, I feel like you're making a good point, but like General Lindoya, the president Lindoya, of the Federation. Just... Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like Rillick and Ndoye are like close friends like that. Like I'm realizing Ndoye, Ndoye has any close doesn't friends. have yeah, has any <laughs> friends on this. Well, I don't know. All right, Dela, what do you think? Given the same information and the same circumstances. Well, and just to remember, Rillick is in the orb that the Ten C sent. Rillick and Trina and Saru and Burnham all went onto the orb and then disappeared. And it was just Hirai and Ndoye. So I honor that Ndoye was like, you all left. I don't know where you went. You were gone. We we put you in the thing. And then all of a sudden y'all left. So I don't know. So I hear that. But I will say the way they wrote Ndoye, the way when we met her, um, just the life she has probably led on Earth. Like, I get why she made those choices. I really wish, though, the general strategist in her had been like, can we wait like 30 more minutes or an hour? I just left. I did not hear that it was going to take a long time for them to pew, 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 and like mess up the DMA. You know what I mean? So like there, I wasn't clear on what the, how long did Book and Tarka need or how long did Tarka need in order to stop the DMA? So I was starting to do all that math about, and then I was just like, yeah, I don't want her to do the thing. Also, cause she's a dope character. And I was really, I'll just say I had a moment. I was like, what are you doing? Like, Yes, exactly. Like, and, and here's the thing: um, black women can mess up too. So, so I gotta, mm -hmm, I gotta, mm -hmm. I, I realized, like, I had, I, I liked that character a lot. So mm -hmm. I was mad when that character was making bad choices. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I can recognize that the character was getting a lot of information from book, and had, and there was like mm -hmm. book. I trust Book. If Book came to me and said some wild stuff, I'd be like, you know what? Anybody else saying wild things, I wouldn't give them the time of day. But you're compelling. Um, uh, uh, Letitia, what, what would you do? Again, given the same information as General Lindoye. So given the same information, um, I also think I would I would wait. But but because um, General Lindoye, you're right. She We know that she's not someone who trusts a lot of people. That tells me that she could have and should have, it, I was trying to research the records of discovery. I don't think that those records wouldn't have been in some ways, you know, out there, even just with the, even if it was just what was done in the modern century with the burn and all of that, like you, if you are going into extra galactic space, you need to know who you're with. That's just a general like military strategy. So I think, if I had learned even in the modern age, how does this crew work and know that they are known for doing the impossible, I think that would have built a little bit more trust. I do respect her having a contingency plan because contingency plan I get completely. And so, but like the actual, like, I'm going to, you know, let out the 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 nissa fuel and all that not to mention we all vibe that you know tark of the turd is a little you know a little off <laughs> so like mm -hmm. even when she got like that that uh, that message like hey do the thing now and i'm not seeing book's face i would have exactly. been like yeah no 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 where's book where's book mm -hmm. i'm yeah. like i need to see you because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like legit legit mm -hmm. i feel like um general Ndoye has been working hard to protect her planet earth for so long um mm -hmm. and and has learned that that there's no one else there's no other planets there's no federation that's going to help and and, uh, and i'm sure that, her, that yeah i'm sure her life experience has taught her that generally she should trust herself so i think Word. that contingency plan the first yes to book yeah 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 even the second conversation, sure, sure, sure. That last exchange with Tarka, where she knew she was making, she knew she was making a bad choice. And she just felt like, well, what else can I do? She was acting out of fear. She was just doing a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. judging. I'm mm -hmm. judging. Mm -hmm. Again, this is why I have to talk to y'all to like process all of this. Y'all, what do you think in the audience? I can't wait to read your opinions. That was Trek Table question number two. And if you are enjoying our show, don't forget to like and follow us on Instagram at Trek Table or on Twitter at Trek underscore Table. You can learn more about today's guests and all our guests at trektable.com. And now, and now, let us use this opportunity to move our bodies for a thematic dance break. We are inviting you to do some Star Trek dance moves. Yeah. 
For the thematics part of our conversation here on the Trek Table, episode number 45. We're going to take this time to kind of continue to dig into all of the things we've been talking about, braid it all together. We're talking about episode uh, 12, te- uh, Species 10C from season four of Star Trek Discovery. And we just got into some really interesting things about uh, General Ndoye and the choices that she's making in this episode. Uh, we also <laughs> learned in Disco Recap, we didn't get through all the things of the things this episode that happened as we meet Species 10 see so um a lot of different things and i think i heard you claudia mention this as you as uh, leticia and you were in a trek table question earlier and just this moment of like we're getting a lot of things i feel like star trek we're getting a penultimate episode but two seasons ago i'm getting space battles and klingon showing up and i'm not getting that i'm not getting a space battle so can you tell me like tell me about how this this uh pre-finale episode is going and your expectations about where we're getting with 10C and all the things. Yeah, well, all right, so you're getting my um, my showrunner perspective, right? So this is less of a Star Trek fan perspective, more of a fan of all television perspective. It's interesting the kind of story beats you come to expect from the final episodes, the penultimate episodes. We get used to them, we come to expect them. These episodes are giving me emotionally all of the arcs that I've come to expect. I'm crying when I think I'm gonna cry. I'm feeling really tense and anxious. I'm very concerned about characters and stuff. And yet, who's the bad guy? Where are the bad guys? Where's the traditional frame of conflict? There isn't actually, what I love is that it's it's just, it's not as easy. And I love that about about this episode. Um, And yeah, so I'll, I'll give you that, yeah. I appreciate that. And I, and I realized that we've been digging in and then we just kind of did a pullback, but I feel like this episode felt that way to me. It was so huge in its scope. And so, you know, I want to, I want, I want to bring you in here, Leticia, um, because I've been thinking about the way in which we've been talking about loss all season. We've been talking about grief and healing. And here we get this moment in this episode. First, we learn book's name, where it comes from. But second, we get this amazing series of connections, monologue speeches, conversation with Auntie Reno and book and just having this really honest conversation. It feels like one of the most authentic conversations about loss that I have ever felt in a Star Trek. And I'm also wondering if that's because I just feel this character. Like, I'm just curious about all the things, but so there's so many things I'm wondering, yeah, as you, uh, emotionally chunked through this episode, uh, what kinds of things come up for you? Well, one thing that I think um, is really important about that conversation between Reno and Buck, and I love, um, Claudia, that you brought in kind of the no real bad guys thing, because the thing that I think makes Reno's speech so um, impactful is how much she caused harm to another person in the mm-hmm. in the process of processing her own loss, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and we, and we saw mm-hmm. she was describing, mm-hmm. I I did something poorly, mm-hmm. and I did something that hurt someone else mm-hmm. for myself mm-hmm. because I was in so much pain, mm-hmm. and that I think hits book in a particular way. And that hits Mm -hmm. us in a particular way because it is very rare that we admit when we've done something harmful. Mm -hmm. And so for a character that we know and trust and who we think is incredible to admit, I did something that caused harm Mm -hmm. to another human because I was in so much pain. Mm-hmm. Um, just it's a it's a raw, very real conversation, which um, which we don't get often, and we mm-hmm. don't just in general don't admit how much we can hurt others when we're hurting, mm-hmm. and that's um, yeah, 
I think that was mm-hmm. just really powerful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as we're having this convo, I feel like I want to go back and do like Auntie Reno's wisdom in 10 steps. <laughs> like, here's all the things Auntie's ever said to us, like snarkily so. But yeah, just, <laughs> you know, just opening up all of that in terms of us being able to like hold all these things. I think the other thing that's really powerful is the way in which we've seen in this season, uh, Colbert have an arc around his care. We were talking about that in the disco recap. Um, Maya Mama, I'm coming to you because I'm thinking about the way we saw Captain Michael Burnham finally step forward and say to Saru, like, I need to talk to somebody. Can we have a minute? Because we're about to go. And like, she doesn't even say all the, you know, my booze and the thing and the thing and the thing. But I just, we saw Burnham and Saru have this really beautiful moment of Burnham being able to ask for somebody to hold space for her. And then for them having this lovely exchange. And then all the Saru-ness of Saru that's happening this episode. So uh, I want to invite you to jump in here and thoughts about um, what we're seeing in this episode in terms of um, these arcs. Well, um, I think that cathartic screams uh, can be good for your health. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and particularly these two i'm meaning burnham and saru like they need all of the outlets that they can get to relieve their stress um when you're in a high leadership role it's hard to lean on others i think it's really helpful that um burnham and saru are the same rank they are equal even though burnham has command they are equal to each other uh, meaning that uh, burnham can rely and lean more on Saru on uh, as far as what I've I've been seeing and I really think that's that's really beautiful um the uh, <laughs> the stuff with Saru and Tarina um I is 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 super cute it makes me feel like this is a rom-com and Tarina is like a no-nonsense <laughs> business lady and like she's like I have to work and I don't have time for a relationship and he's like also really committed to his career and then like their wise cracking extremely successful friend is like y'all just need to get together i don't know that's <laughs> sort of what i'm seeing here i just you know yeah. she's it, it, it does seem like she's like no i have to be the best business lady yeah. um mm-hmm. i <laughs> i'm not sure i it's it's a little old it's a little tired sometimes mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. uh maybe that's because it's universal Right. Well, and I think they're also really thinking about connected to this part of Burnham is like a lot of I I mean, I think we're seeing layers in this show in terms of those folks we've talked about before, like those folks who are who are in the middle of their grieving grief healing process pretty hard, pretty deep in terms of book. We see Colbert kind of take a turn back. Uh, Tilly was having a process. Detmer had process earlier this season. And then we're also seeing people like Burnham and Saru and, um, I mean, Colbert in his, uh, in his manifestations of actualizing a part of themselves that they don't practice. They're just doing, we're seeing leadership happen. And so we're hearing leaders talk about how do I protect my heart when I know I have a job. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So here's the other thing I want to say is that there's two really big things we could super super chuck into in thematics is because this is a this is a first contact episode. I feel like there's lots of conversations in the future. I also want to put out an invitation. I'm looking for indigenous women to co- have a conversation. There's so much first contact moments and like just the fact that this species doesn't speak in verbal communication that they speak in these hydrocarbons and light like they speak in a language that we are not proficient in yet and i just find that really fascinating and i I think we'd have a lot of robust convos about it Uh, the other conversation i realize i've been stuck on (laughs) is i don't i still don't get why book is doing what tarka says and i'm glad auntie i'm glad reno is on this ship i'm glad we get all this beautifulness and we hear book tell us the name of his how he got his name and who he's descended from but i just are they tr- I, I don't get i don't and i agree with reno like what why did you sign up with this guy so i think i just want to open it back up like i feel like we're gonna get resolution in the finale and i acknowledge i've seen the finale already so i'm really working hard to to keep that where it is <laughs> mm-hmm. but in this episode in these moments i'm like i see the arc we've been i don't know i'm just struggling with the oh i don't like tarka and i don't it's that thing of like, I value book and I don't get why he's making these choices. Mm. 
Um, may I? May I? Because I, 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 I've been I've been thinking hard about this because there have been times in my life where there's somebody that I had deep relationship with, someone who I thought was amazing, who was partnered with somebody who was a bad idea and kept having bad ideas, and I couldn't figure out why they continued to stand that person or they continued to support that person. Book tells us. Book tells us that um, he is he. He values the vulnerability and loss and the the single-minded goal of healing that loss. So like he's like, hey, I've got somebody who has a gigantic loss and is trying to heal it. I have a gigantic loss and I'm trying to heal it. We have this in common. But, but then he decides that they must have other things in common. And he's investing, uh, he's investing Tarka with with the kind of trust that he has in himself. And I go, oh, that's empathy that's gone too far, friend. I I have some thoughts, and 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 y'all are going to be maybe a little surprised here. Um, you know, it. Uh, we've all been friends with complicated people in our lives. Um, and I will say that in my in my opinion, I think that books book sees and feels more than we do. And I think that uh, just because of his empathic powers, and I think that he is looking past intention and going, like you're saying, with, with, with too much empathy, he's looking past what the intentions are and going straight to, but this is how he feels. And this is his motivation. Like he's, that's why he's doing it. Like I feel, I feel this for him and it's always going to be a hard thing for, um, uh, it's always, it's one of the hardest things to realize that, uh, other people are not you. It's really hard. And, and, and that's more about this communication and things like that mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cause Turka is, Oh, and I said his name, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. He's a, a a sad, sad nonsense man, and mm -hmm. but for for reasons that are not for us to know, um, book uh, feels camaraderie and and even uh, friendship love for the guy mm -hmm. who has betrayed every friend he's ever had, mm -hmm. which is why he doesn't have any. Oh, yay. Yay. Well, <laughs> let me just say this: uh, I don't think we hear that language until the next episode, right? No, he nope. says it in no, this episode. At the no, end of this episode, that he yeah. doesn't have any friends. Right. Yeah, he no, says, oh, yeah, I've only he ever it. had two friends, friends, Oris and you. And okay. then Reno's like, "Oh, and this is how you treat them." Yeah, like I yeah, see. yeah. Which also All makes right. me wonder why Vance is was like, "Hey, this is my dude." I'm like, "How did that happen?" I just, I've got questions, but that's something for another. That's something for another time. Um. As far as book and 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 uh, I don't know, Toad, um, I feel like I feel like the thing that that book keeps on missing mm -hmm. with Tarka is that Tarka doesn't have a limit. He doesn't mm. have an internal an internal place that says you should stop now. Hmm. And so I think, I think the thing that book keeps on thinking that, you know, he has, cause you know, everyone, even the most like, you know, amoral couriers he's ever met, they do have a place where they stop. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tarka mm -hmm. just does not yeah. have it. He, he, he just doesn't have that, that internal limit. And so it's almost like, to me, it's like when, when, when hyper-focus goes super, super wrong. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, you know, but when you see that someone has that vision and they're like, okay, mm -hmm. you see some things that I don't, you understand mm -hmm. things that I don't. And I'm trusting that, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the things that we share, that you're using the knowledge that you have that I don't for the mm -hmm. best outcome. Mm -hmm. And with that mm -hmm. is the assumption again mm -hmm. that if something causes major harm, you will stop. And that's mm -hmm. the thing that that book has, you know. Yeah. Even even though he was like going, 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 Michael knew that right. he does have a hard limit. There is a place mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. time, and so he will stop. Yeah, he will stop himself. Yeah, 
And so I, I appreciate this conversation. You all have helped me kind of get to this point in terms of like, yes, discovery continues to be a really interesting way to explore equity, diversity, and inclusion conversations. <laughs> um, because I think it actually helps me think about, yeah, how do we help us, you know, support people having limits? But then also this last piece of like, book assigned a cultural set of values that Tarka was not a mm. part of. Mm -hmm. yes, that Courier's that. value name, Courier's value trust. I mean, the way book went on, like I feel like part of what I do in my Star Trek fandom is I always piece together the parts of the characters and the cultures that resonate because we only ever get pieces. So I'm like trying to construct the book and Burnham gap year of like, what did they do that year we didn't see them? So I'm used to having to create the full Star Trek world in my mind. So I feel spoiled in disco, but I'm also just like, but it's, but wow, they're still teaching me more. So I, I, I appreciate us going off on this tangent and connecting to that thing of like, I get in trouble when I make assumptions that other people value what I value. Ooh. And, we, and, we, and we just made an agreement to, to leave a workshop together. That's all we agreed to. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna say this. Season finale is there is a lot to talk about. I know we're going to chunk through some other stuff. So I want to say if you're digging this conversation and you want to get up in it with us, we're going to be back and we're going to talk about it for season uh, for the finale of season four. But for right now, I think that is a great place for us to say. And those were our thoughts on thematic season four, episode 12, Species 10C. And now we are heading into our final track table question number three. What math equation would you send to communicate with aliens? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to our Trek Table question number three, final Trek Table question. What math equation would you send? Yo, they was using Linkos. They referenced Linkos. I love math. Numbers are fun. Let's get into it, my friends. Um, Just real quick, because I know you all have math equations just in your head casually. So, Dela, we'll begin with you. What math equation would you send to communicate with an alien? I would send them one, four, three, one, two, one, six, oh, seven, nine, one, one, which in pager nineties code is, I love you. I need to talk to you. I miss you. Call me now. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Um, Leticia, 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 what math equation would you send to the aliens? I'm just sitting with, with Dela's like, time specific dma <laughs> code. So like you need to know specifically the time that that happened to decode that i love that okay i'm done um i would send a fractal equation uh because fractals are pretty and i would just be like here, here here's my virtual plant flower look it's it's pretty it's a fractal equation um or whatever i remember from the parallel lines theorem in geometry um basically being like this, I'm this line, you're that line, we need to connect. Parallel lines theorem. Mm, I like that. You're now giving me different, I already chose my math one, so I'm gonna stick with that, but you're giving me new ones to think of. Uh, Maya Mama, what math equation would you send? I would send uh, a number joke, such as why is six afraid of seven? Because like, <laughs> that's like a great icebreaker. And they'd be like, Oh, these these <laughs> folks are hilarious. Yeah, let's sit down and talk. Oh my god. Seven, eight, nine. What? <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I think the 10 C would be laughing and we would be receiving hydrocarbons of amusement and joy. Now, um, my original answer, so you inspired me to go, oh, the Fibonacci sequence. Durr, Claudia, you should send this Fibonacci sequence. But the one that I just but this was the answer I had come up with for y'all, which was I would send a pie with pie on it. <laughs> because because i love pi as a number 
I think it's mm-hmm. awesome and it does cool mm-hmm. things with math, but actually mm-hmm. Fibonacci sequence would probably be classier. That said, <laughs> these were all such audience. What are your responses? What math equations would you have? I'm surprised y'all had such good math responses. This was the best. I want I want more fun math jokes, y'all. And that was Trek Table Question number three mm-hmm. for season four, episode 12, mm-hmm. Species 10 C. Hey, hey, and if you are enjoying this trick table and all the wacky ways we like to answer these trick table (laughs) questions, why not hit that like and subscribe button right here on YouTube, ring that bell, and get notifications when we get new trick table content. All right, we are back at the final uh, final set of segments here in the Trek Table episode number 45 as we're breaking out and diving deep into Species 10C. All right, this is Star Trek shenanigans. Now, if you are new, if you're a newbie and you're like, what are the shenanigans? Basically, it's our way to acknowledge maybe an Easter egg or a callback or a something that we see that makes our little Star Trek fan inside giggle or maybe go, hmm. So those are the shenanigan outlines. Um, You might catch someone, you watch your episode, so we want to hear those in the chat. So if you've got some shenanigans, please feel free to drop those in. We're waiting for them. All right, I'm going to start us off with two, and uh, we're just going to go through the company really fast. All right, so Dr. Hirai says that when they send the orb, it is covered in the hydrocarbon of peace. So it made me be like, we come in peace. They said us a thing covered in peace. Okay, that was my one. (laughs) Shenanigan. All right, number two of my favorite shenanigans so far of this season is Cleveland Booker, the fifth of his name. Makes me wonder, is he the dread pirate Roberts of Star yes. Trek? <laughs> so if you are a Princess Bride fan, Princess Bride fan, friends, Booker, the fifth of mm-hmm. his name, get it. All right, Maya Mama, those are my shenanigans today. What brought you joy in this episode? What shenanigan did you see? Oh, man, it's just that General Ndoye has, like, zero chill. Like, no (laughs) chill. Like, like the second that something goes wrong, it's like, you know what? This isn't even going to work, and we just need to quit. Um, And it seems like she was this way when we first met her, when she was Captain Ndoye of of the Earth Space Force, and and was, like, blasting on refugees from Titan. Like, just, like, I will not take the time to ask any questions i just have to keep going because i'm right and um and this is the best way for me to protect earth uh she does not care about others um and it, it it's uh, she doesn't not real. i mean except like it, it, unless like she cares about earth first she cares about others but she cares about earth first it's always earth first mm-hmm. and like i get that but like also one of the big lessons on uh, on the season is just the 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 collective universal community and um and uh she's just not good at like uh being a team player and and it seems very odd that she's a general okay <laughs> we got some there's some shenanigans there i love it i love it come on we're inviting in all the things Letitia, i'm curious what's your shenanigan this week um uh, there's a couple things I'm thinking about, but 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 Maya Mama, it, it it just it makes me wonder about how Terran Earth has become since mm-hmm. we seen it last. Yeah, because if, if you're wondering about like how did General Zoe mm. get to where she is, mm. that says something about the culture of Earth as it is at this moment, mm-hmm. and mm. it's a military force for lack of a better term. So, mm-hmm. just thoughts. Um, I, my shenanigan is really math, language, and and music, and how like you know those three can really be one if you like introduce all three at the same time at a certain point in your life, and we needed music understanding and math to get this language and it just i love that in that in those layers also particular shout out to spock as in mr logical also expert on the vulcan liar um also shout out to um 
Hoshi Sato uh, in in Enterprise because like not only was she the the linguist, I remember that one episode where she had to like figure out this equation to get out of like whatever room, and she was like, "Math is just another language." I was like, "Yes!" yes. So, like that just and and just the very um, Enterprise first contact, especially again, going back to, you know, enterprise when they're like, we're just figuring this out and we don't know how people talk. And this very much being in this episode of discovery of them being like, our tools aren't working. We got to figure it out. So I see that connection um, between this episode of discovery and in, uh, in older um, series. Yes, Letitia. <laughs> yes, I love the Hoshi Sato reference. That is gorgeous. All right, here are my shenanigans. I got. Mm-hmm. I just got a couple quick ones. One, did anyone else see the Chicago Bean? You know how in Chicago <laughs> there's a the silver orb, mysterious mm-hmm. orb that looks like it's from outer space. It looks mm-hmm. like a big silver bean. I don't know what it's called. Is it called a bean? I don't know. But that ship looked like the Chicago Bean. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Are they gonna go to Chicago? And then black licorice payoff, y'all. Black licorice payoff for the win. I screamed. I screamed. It made me so happy because I have been. Y'all don't even know. I have been tracking all of the references that they have been making to her having snacks. They keep like, she's snacking, they're making jokes about the snacks, and I'm like, they're setting something up. But what on earth could they have been setting? I, I had no idea what they were setting up, and I was I was here for it, and I loved it. I was so satisfied. Just snack, Reno snacking for the win. Um, and um, according to Maya Mama, every episode before the finale is penultimate, and I'm now just going to be enjoying that joke for the for the rest of like entire <laughs> series, I would be like, "This is penultimate." No, no, this one is penultimate. No, this one's penultimate. I'm going to be sad when the season's over, y'all. This was a lot of fun. Indeed, indeed, and just like this season, this was super fun. So that is Star Trek <laughs> shenanigan. Oh, and we want to give a special shout out to the Trek Table friends assembled in the chat and our live audience while we're recording this episode. You are amazing. Thank you for being here. And we would like to say thanks to all our friends listening on the podcast. If you want to support us even more, hit that like and follow button. We here at the Trek table strive to hold space for black, indigenous, brown women of color. And we want to amplify and highlight the work of women of color content creators, community builders, and world shapers. And today we're super excited. Our guest has been Letitia Jones from Introspectional Podcast. Thanks for being here today. You want to tell us about Introspectional? What's up for you? Hey, everybody. Quick second the booth, want to let you know that I have uh, my podcast, Introspectional, and I'm actually having a Kickstarter. So my Kickstarter is going all throughout the month of April, and it ends right before um, Strange New World premieres, shockingly. So please find uh, Introspectional Season 2, where I try to have conversations a lot like Chuck Table, where we go deep into content, we talk about the things that really matter to us, and then find a way to conclude on how we can move forward with the lessons that we've learned. So I look forward to hopefully you joining me on my podcast. Again, please look at my Kickstarter if you can. And everyone, just let's move into good space together. Letitia, do you want to tell us where people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find Introspectional. I have a website, www.introspectional.com. So it's spelled like intersectional, but with a P in the middle. Uh, So that's probably probably the easiest way to remember it. Uh, You can also find me on um, Twitter at Introspectional and Instagram, Introspectional Pod. Uh, So those are the best places to find me. I also have a Facebook page. So let's, let's get the conversation going. And as is the case at at the end of every Trek Table episode, we like to round things up with our final thoughts. All right. Maya Mama, you started us off with our check-ins earlier today, so I wonder if I could ask you to start us off with your final thoughts for Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 12, Species 10C. Um, I have been really, really particularly loving uh, how Star Trek uh, embraces um, imperfect people. Um, because like for, cause I think that it's, um, it brings us all 
and into Star Trek um, and it makes us all feel um, worthy of it. And mostly I am just super excited to talk about this next episode, this ultimate, I guess is what we would call it, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Maya mama um claudia your final thoughts today uh this episode had me thinking a lot about how the story we tell ourselves about what's happening can really deeply impact what's going to happen so we saw the same set of events happening and the story that was being told um by burnham was this is bad but this is solvable we can fix this. There's hope. But the story that was being told by General Ndoye was uh, there's nothing good happening yet. Therefore, nothing good will happen. We have to do something totally different. And the story that Tarka was telling was completely manipulative and wrong. And I'm just thinking about the stories that I experience today about what's happening in the real world and, and contemporary news. And I go, right. I need to be thinking through the lens of a Michael Burnham when I'm looking at the story of what's happening with my life and the story of what's happening with the world. I cannot, I cannot be looking at it through the lens of a General Ndoye, and I definitely should not be listening to the Tarkas out there trying to get me to think stupid ideas so I'll make bad choices so that they can do what they wanted to do. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to go next after that. Thank you. I appreciate that, Claudia, so much. I want to say that I am today thinking about um, Jet Reno and Auntie Reno. And just as we have these conversations today, what I've been noticing all season is just realizing not only I think it's Tig Notaro doing an amazing job. I also think David Ajala and Tig, like that, that scene with them having these intimate conversations Ooh. was really powerful. Um, I appreciate watching skilled people have an opportunity to do their work, even if they don't recognize how skilled they can be. I hear um, mm -hmm. that Tig doesn't always believe that she's doing it right. What? But I guess here's what I want to say. Yeah, so I think good. she's nervous. Comedian, she's not actor. Like, But here's the thing I want to say is, like, I just want to have a moment and say thank you to all the queer aunties and uncles. Like, mm. Jet has brought mm -hmm. so much to this. Yeah, I'm about to cry about it. But just, like, the way that... <sighs> She brings the authenticity, she brings the clarity, but just watching the way in which like, there are reasons that we are all here and we need to be family mm. with each other. Mm. Because mm. she needed to tell this stuff to Book. Burnham mm. needed somebody to tell this to Book. Book needed somebody to tell this to him. Book needed her to tell him this. Just like Tilly needed Reno to give her advice, just like Adira needed Reno to give her advice, just like Stam, just like Colbert in season two when Reno had to go out to him and be like, what are you doing? People like mm -hmm. us need people like them. So just wanting to really appreciate, like, not only the performances, but the whole arc of, like, the found family-ness of this story, of this ship, and just appreciating the way that mm. people are reflected. So thank you for letting me share my feelings, but I'm, like, super overwhelmed because I'm, like, and then I just want to say, yeah, to the butch, to the butches out there. We don't always get seen like this, so I just... Yeah. And, you know, I don't know that that's how this character yeah. identifies. That's how I read this character. But just mm -hmm. just wanting to say, yeah, I appreciate it. I see it. I feel it. And that's that's my yeah. final thought this episode is like, I can't wait to go go back and watch all this and talk about all the queer fan bamness of this whole series. So that's my final thought. Thank you for letting me have feels. Letitia, mm. you've been here for some things today. <laughs> and so I want to invite you as our guest. Um, just go ahead and we'd love to hear what's your final thoughts of Star Trek Discovery season four, episode 12. What's interesting, Dela, is my final thoughts is about feels. Uh, and it is about the importance and the value of emotion, um, which is just not just throughout uh, Star Trek Discovery, but also this episode specifically to have a, a species introduced who communicates primarily through emotion and that values that, and that we get to see our characters work through so many emotions and work through how their emotions affect their decision-making, how it affects their decision-making both positively and negatively. And, you know, when you have a character like Reno, who um, in, in her, uh, 
directness is trying to be real with herself and then thus real with others. And when you have that person, that can help you see a clearer path with your emotions, not against them, not avoiding them, not turning them to something else, just being like, you have emotions and you have a clear way and we can make that all work together. Um, And I just think my final thought is really about we can value our emotions and still see that, um, see, still see things as solvable, even when things are hurting or we uh, don't 100% feel that way, but we have to have faith that it is solvable. Thank you so much for those final thoughts, everybody. Um, I'm going to invite us to take a breath together because I'm still feeling all the things. Thanks thanks for these really wonderful final thoughts and these insights on today's episode and every episode we've all been able to talk to, talk with each other about. Yeah. So let's take a breath. And exhale. Thank you so much. And those are our final thoughts on Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 12, Species 10C. Join us next Sunday, April 17th, when we discuss the finale of Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Coming Home. Wanting to catch up on Discovery Season 13? It's streaming now on Paramount+. Plus. Thank you all so much for joining us today at the Trek Table. Get first look at the Trek Table questions, inside scoops, and more when you sign up for our mailing list at trektable.com. Find Trek Table podcasts on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe to this channel so that you can get more Trek Table into your algorithms. Like and subscribe to us on Instagram at Trek Table and on Twitter at Trek underscore Table. And finally, I'd like to start this round of, uh, continue this round of gratitude and just say thank you so much to this table assembled. I want to say thank you always to Claudia, Alec, Maya mills Lowe, and our guest today, Letitia Jones. Thank you all so much for your insights, your wisdom, your hilarity, um, and the care and the skill in which you're able to talk about that. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's been listening and watching us today. We want to appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for uh, holding Trek Space with us. As you remembered uh, earlier today, we were holding Trek Space for amazing sci-fi drama centered on badass women of color. We were holding Trek Space for faith in the power of communication. We were holding Trek Space for that time that you need to find a solution and for just remembering that when you're trying, even when it feels impossible. Trek Table executive producers are Allison Dela Cruz and Luz Muniz Jariwala. Production coordinator, Brandon Chang. Stream manager, Ariana Michelle. Audio head, Melanie Lopez. And social media manager, Isil Borlasa. Trek Table was brought to you in part by Outside In Theater. For more information about Outside In Theater, go to outsideintheater.org or their YouTube channel. The link is below in our show description or on their Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash outsideintheater. Thanks to Dr. Deborah Carter, Doc Sulu, and Nancy Yap, and our partners at Visual Communications. Yes, yes, and we also want to say big thanks to our friends at East West Players, and of course, a big, big, big thank you to our content partners at Colleague of Justice, and big love and thanks and a round of appreciation to Master Jariwala. Trek Table is a service mark of Daylog Projects, LLC. Yes, yes, I'm going to say thank you all for joining us today on this Trek table. Let's go ahead and close this ritual today. Get yourself centered. Let's go ahead and take a breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. We hope that you'll join us next Sunday, April 17th, 2022, as we dive into the finale of Season 4 of Star Trek Discovery, Coming Home, available now on Paramount+. Plus. Don't worry, we're going to be holding Trek space for you till then. See you next week.